Spirit might be cheap, tight-fisted, and unashamedly crass, but there's no denying they changed the airline game forever. Chapter 1. Come Fly With Me Back in the 1970s, flying looked a lot different than it does now. At the start of the century, taking to the skies was nothing more than a wild dream held in the most adventurous people's hearts. Less than 70 years later, Neil Armstrong became the first man to set foot on the moon. Despite the incredible technological leaps mankind had made in flight, getting a shuttle or plane off the ground was still a costly endeavor. The dream of simply heading to the airport, hopping on a plane, and flying across the planet was still very much out of most Americans' reach at the time. Flying was truly a luxury experience reserved only for the most elite members of society. Airlines specialized in providing top levels of comfort, offering regular drinks, snazzy seats, and mild-mannered air hostesses to cater to their passengers' every need. If people were going to fork out the money to fly, they wanted to do so in style. This was the world Ned Homefield was born into, and he immediately saw a problem. Growing up, Ned loved to fish and tinker with odd parts. His most profound love, however, was for sales. The man lived to provide good services for a decent price. Ned studied marine engineering at the University of Michigan for a time, but found that the trucking side business had started picking up steam. Choosing to follow his calling, Ned dropped out of college and launched himself into his fledgling company full time. The business was called Clippert Trucking Company and specialized in delivering car parts to manufacturers in cities like Detroit and Cleveland. Considering the booming automotive industry in these two cities at the time, Ned had found a very lucrative market indeed. Ned noticed the company taking off and decided to make it do so in a very literal sense too. In 1974, he changed the business name to Ground Air Transfer, a sign of the direction he wanted to take the company in. It wasn't until 1983 that Ned officially founded Charter One, a brand new name ready to enter the airline game. As any sharp-minded business expert will tell you, there's no point in entering a competitive market without something to set yourself apart from the crowd. Why bother trying to beat people at their own game? When Charter One first started, it used planes that were owned by other airline companies that were on standby. The company connected flyers from Atlantic City, Boston, Rhode Island, and Chicago. Ned targeted locations that were known for their extravagant entertainment industries, festivals, holidays, and most importantly, gambling, were all commonplace in the cities Charter One offered to fly to. This model of offering luxury packages to gamblers paid off big time. By 1992, Charter One had cemented itself as a small airliner that provided affordable services to a number of key destinations. Sure, they didn't have as much reach as their traditional competitors, but with a steadily growing list of destinations and an incredibly loyal customer base, Ned had successfully carved out a spot at the big boys' table. There was just one problem, the company name. Ned felt Charter One didn't fit the overall image of the business, so he rebranded to Spirit Airlines. The planes were painted bright yellow to set them apart from the others. But this was just the beginning for Spirit. Little did anyone know, Ned was about to stumble upon an idea which would transform aviation forever. Chapter 2, Flights for the Masses. Very quickly, if you guys are enjoying the video so far, make sure to hit the like button. It helps the channel grow a ton and we really appreciate the support. Thanks. One thing that most people learn at a young age is that the world never stops turning, no matter how much you want it to stop. For airline companies, who specialize in moving people across the planet, it's an invaluable lesson to take on board, both in a literal and figurative sense. As the world entered a new millennium, flight travel began to change considerably. The cost of fuel, parts, and flying in general had become much lower, meaning tons of new competitors flooded the market. This was fantastic news for flyers. High competition and lower costs meant prices continued to fall. Thanks to the new low-cost carrier craze, the average Joe could now afford to buy a plane ticket. A massive market had just opened up, and every player in the airline game was looking to get a slice of the pie. Spirit, meanwhile, was struggling. Their model of sticking to just a handful of locations and building a loyal base had lost its edge in the hyper-competitive LCC industry. Worse still, the man behind the company's initial meteoric rise, Ned, retired in 2004, just as Spirit started to spiral. 
the airline had to find some way of pulling up before the whole operation fell into a tailspin. A new man stood at the helm now, Ben Baldaza, Spirit's president and CEO. Ben took a long, hard look at the state of the company and what their competitors were doing. One airline stood out to him, Ryanair. Ryanair was an Irish line that operated in Europe and had started around the same time as Spirit. The company's mission was to offer the most affordable, low-cost flights possible. Ryanair wanted to make flying as cheap as riding the bus. The company took the low-cost carrier model to the extreme, ultra-low-cost carrier. The Irish airline was making massive waves in Europe and had quickly cemented itself as the go-to flight company for the average jet setter. Ben saw the incredible success Ryanair was enjoying and decided to replicate their model in the American market. Spirit stripped away every single luxury it could to bring down costs. Comfy seats? Don't need them. Need more luggage space? You can pay for that. The airline even stopped giving out free meals during their flights, something which would have appalled flyers back in the 1970s. The age of luxury was over. A new era of cheap, no-nonsense flight was looming just over the horizon, and Spirit was perfectly positioned to reap all the rewards of their hard work. Chapter 3 Spirited Away With their battle plan all laid out, the board members at Spirit turned once again to Ben. With this new cost-saving strategy in place, the company wanted to reinvent its image to better fit the approach. This wasn't as straightforward as one might think. After all, until then, airlines had always marketed themselves as professional, elite services that provided only the best comfort. Think of an airline like Emirates. The company has taken extreme levels of care to portray itself as the highest quality airline in the world. Beautiful air hostesses donning iconic Emirati scarves and sporting broad smiles have become synonymous with the flying experience. Even Ryanair, known for being cheap and easy, makes sure to always present the company in a professional light when advertising. But Spirit hadn't become successful by mimicking their competition, quite the opposite. It took its advertising in a totally new direction. Spirit decided to become the clowns of the airline world, the comedians who were never afraid to poke fun at society. The company set out to portray itself as fun, easygoing, and not as stuck up as the rest of the industry. That way, people would associate Spirit with a cheap, reliable option for travel. The marketing team didn't pull any punches. They included slogans like, Many Islands, Low Fares, which makes a rather lewd acronym. Internet ads of a raunchy nature started popping up all over websites. Whenever a significant celebrity scandal appeared in the papers, Spirit was quick to jump on it. When petroleum giant BP caused a major spill in the Gulf of Mexico, the airline immediately poked fun at them. Check out the oil on our beaches, they said, showing a bikini-clad woman glistening with oil. The brilliance of the marketing strategy was that it was a two-pronged attack. Some would see the advertisements, laugh, and look up the airline later. Others would be appalled at the commercials and would take to the internet to complain, just as Spirit intended. Any publicity is good publicity after all. Sure, some would be forever turned off by Spirit's crass nature, but those who listen to the people complaining on Twitter might think to themselves, okay, they're a bit crude, but look at those prices. All good things come to an end, however. While Spirit enjoyed a period of significant growth from the mid-2000s, the airline has been struggling to keep up with the competition in recent years. A merger with competitor JetBlue is on the books, which would no doubt lead to a stark change in direction. Worse still, Spirit's founder, Ned, passed away after a lengthy battle with leukemia in 2016. Despite not being a part of the company for many years, he was instrumental in turning it into the ULCC champion it is today. While Spirit's potential end and the death of its founder might seem bitter, the truth is Ned accomplished everything he wanted to with the airline. Change how people viewed flying. The man successfully made the dream of cutting through the clouds a reality for the average Joe. The innovations he brought about are now a staple of the business, and all of his competitors now follow in his footsteps. Spirit might be cheap, tight-fisted, and unashamedly crass, but there's no denying they changed the airline game forever. What do you make of Spirit Airlines' story? Do you think they changed flying for the better? Or should airlines revert back to the old ways? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this in the future. Until next time.